What's up guys, welcome back to another Hazel devlog. I thought I'd do something a little bit different here today. Instead of just taking you into Hazel and explaining what I'm doing, I thought I would actually show you some of the development process as well as talk about what exactly is going to be coming next. So yesterday I did a live stream, twitch.tv slash the I typically stream like at least once a week and we have like the whole game engine series where with all of the planning, everything happens live and that's like Hazel 2D. But then also throughout the week, I try and stream myself like working on Hazel, Big Hazel, Hazel 3D, all of that stuff. That's also where like the Optimization October kind of Project Orange ties into as well. And so yesterday I just had a nice chill stream just talking about like what I wanna do with Hazel and working on Hazel itself. And I thought that you guys might wanna see like a little bit of that. So I've put it together into this video. So this devlog is going to be basically taken from yesterday's stream. We're still kind of working on the mesh workflow thing that I mentioned in the last devlog, which will be linked up there in case you missed it. There are also some very exciting things as always coming very soon that I'm I'm excited to share with you guys. But hey, this is a devlog, so I'm saying that like at the moment I'm just working on optimizing the mesh workflow, then I'll move on to optimizing Hazel itself in like the ways that I talked about in the Optimization October video. And then uh, it should be pretty fun from there. I'll just say that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this slightly different video. If you like this, by the way, this is uh, still for sale. There's a link in the description below to buy some merch. My wife drew this turkey. Why a turkey? Well, OG, OG Cherno stream watchers will know why. I'll just leave it at that. Don't forget, you can also support Hazel and get access to Hazel by going to patreon.com slash the Cherno. Huge thank you to everyone who makes all of this possible. Without further ado, let's get right into the stream. So we have Fractured Cube and Orange Cube. And if I just drop in Orange Cube, right? Let's, so this guy is at zero, zero, zero. And that's what it looks like. Ah, oh, the weird normal maps. I forgot about that, actually. Whatever. Um, and then fractured cube. So fractured cube, let's also bring that to zero, zero, zero. Um, well, first of all, they don't actually seem... Oh, this isn't at zero, zero, zero. Never mind, I lied. Let's put it at like zero, five, zero. Just because zero, zero, zero is in the ground. And then we'll put this at zero, five, zero as well. And you'll see that they are not, they're not, they, they don't line up. <laughs> they're not aligned. And the reason they're not aligned is because like literally the geometry is not aligned. It, the, they're different, right? Um, and I think, I don't know which one's correct. If we just make a normal cube and we put it at zero, five, zero, we'll easily see which one is correct. It looks like our boy is correct. I don't know why it's our boy, but basically this orange one is correct, right? And then this one's wrong. Um, but yeah like it's obviously not uh ideal having this and that's also why well <laughs> that's also why if we shoot this you guys might notice that there's a bit of a jitter because it just kind of you know we spawn a new one in but it's at the wrong position and whatever and it's just kind of annoying um that we have that so i want to fix that up real quick shouldn't be too difficult if we just uh go to i think it is called fractured cube and it's a mesh source. Let's just let's just open a blender, uh, and then we'll import FBX. I kind of want to import both of them. We'll see. Because my my problem is that I don't necessarily know where it's supposed to be, right? Because I'm just gonna line the other one up. Um, so let's import the other one. Well, the other one's just a normal kind of cube, but it's just nice to have it. So here it is, this kind of orange boy. This is where I want to have it lined up. It actually is lined up with the grid cell. So I think what we should be able to do is snap to absolute grid, right? Is that going to work? Well, it works for this, but I don't know if it's going to work for all of these. Yeah, see, it's a bit... It's not actually doing absolute grid snap, is it? Um, but that's okay, actually. We can just, I think we can just, but I don't, don't really want to do that, do I? I can zoom in and make it ultra precise. <laughs> Look at that jump. Okay, that looks pretty good. I doubt anyone's gonna be able to tell the difference, so whatevs. Okay, now we export. 
Ah, oh, because the transforms. No, never mind. Yeah, we do have to remake it because the the transforms. When you make this, the transforms get put in here, right? So that's why. Um, so, but it's it should be very easy to remake. Well, kind of. That's a bit annoying though. But how will we deal with that? We'd have to update the transforms, right? So would I? How would I? I guess I would like to select all of these and then be like, update transforms from mesh. And so what that will do is look up the mesh and snap the transforms back to what they should be. I guess that would be reasonable. Okay, so now what should happen is if I click on one of these, yeah, I should have the option. So which one did I just click on? Uh, cell 08. If I, I can reset transform to mesh, Hey, and see how it just snaps to this? So that's perfectly in position now because I did the reset transform. But if I select the whole lot and I do reset all transforms to mesh, they all reset. Look at that. Perfect. First try. I mean, it wasn't particularly hard, but you know. Now, this is just a model, a very dense model. I'll show you just how dense it is. Well, it's not that dense. It's dense for physics, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's not that dense. All right. Brilliant. And now I can do update prefab. And what this should mean is that now these are all perfect. So much like updating and stuff. I think that's, I mean, it's hard to tell, but yeah, that looks, that looks flawless now. So now they should look better. Let me just make these shadow settings not terrible quickly. Cause well, I don't know why, but our default Shadow settings are actually like trying to look bad deliberately almost. This should be better. So you can shoot these out of the sky. Oh, um, hold your, hold your horses. Controller. <laughs> so, what I should be able to do is just plug this in, because surprise, we have this as well. Plug it in, and then... I thought I added it on this computer. Oh, I'm not even focused. There we go. <laughs> I, I had, t I had um, OBS focused. Look at this, playing with a controller. Pretty cool, playing claw. Let's go shoot some cubes. I'll play with my hands here so you guys can see. Ah, need aim assist. I've done pretty well without aim assist, but aim assist would be nice. So what do you guys think? Is it ready to ship on Steam yet? Oh man. Nah, I need some like particle effects and decals and stuff. <laughs> decals, decals. I don't know why. For a while I said decals is a bit of a joke and I actually just say it unironically now. <laughs> um, if you, you can also shoot it, shoot these pieces on the ground. I'm just holding down trigger. So yeah. And actually, one more thing we can do, which is pretty cool. I'll save this. I always don't know if Control S works. There needs to be some feedback when you save. Um, but I also maybe, I don't know if this works, but I might be able to run the runtime. So that means not the editor. So there's Project Orange. Uh, I don't know if this will, will, will be maximized. I don't know what situation this will be in. Full screen is false. I guess I could set full screen to true. But this will be maximized. No, that doesn't work. Uh, that's because I think um, there's this, yeah, there's this one little thing where there's this one little thing that doesn't work in the runtime and there's just a little, little thing, yeah, see? And then now you're playing real game. Let's make it full screen though. 
haven't actually tested full screen in a while. Whoa, that does not work. Wait, it looks fine for you guys, I think. I've got like OBS open here and it looks fine, but I'm actually about a third of the screen for me is flickering black. Like I can't see a third of the screen, but it looks fine on stream. Does it look fine for you guys on stream? Because for me in real life, it does not look fine. I'll try and take a photo. Okay, let's go back to false. I'll just play it windowed. Um, but yeah, so we've got pretty much a game now. So my plan with this and what I want to do, what I really want to do over time is I want to make like a little first person shooter. I don't know. I've been watching like Call of Duty videos recently. There's this guy. I forgot his name, man. Like art. I don't know. He's been making like these kind of video essays on why he's gone through like all the Call of Duty games and he's just saying like which ones are good, which ones are bad. And like I recently watched the Modern Warfare 2 one and because Modern Warfare 2 is like my favorite first person shooter of all time probably especially the multiplayer um and uh it just kind of like it's a bit nostalgic you know and i feel like what i really want to do is make like kind of a you know uh kind of multiplayer fps or like even maybe split screen to begin with because we don't have networking in hazel yet and that will take a while to put in but i'd love to introduce some multiplayer stuff to hazel and maybe make some kind of FPS game that's fun to play. Not as deep, not like, not full on like Call of Duty art style. Obviously, that will take like a huge team, but something simple and fun, you know, that will just be fun to play at a LAN party or whatever, and then put that up on Steam probably for free. And I think that'll be sick. So that's kind of my kind of longer term plan as I destroy all these cubes. And yeah, it's gonna tie in with this. So no, and I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it'll be like a multiplayer FPS deathmatch game. I think it'll kind of be the way that Project Orange is heading at the moment, because this is like the start of it, right? So I think it'll just be the way that Project Orange is heading at the moment, which is kind of like maybe some kind of like survival game. So maybe it'll be like a multiplayer FPS, but it won't just be like about killing everyone and then respawning and that's it. It'll kind of be mixed in with survival somehow. And like, you know, kind of like maybe weapons or whatever, these things kind of give you maybe some energy. And then you can use that to like shoot people and shoot more, more of these things and whatever. Like, I think it'll be cool to have some kind of mechanic, yeah. I want to make a game with Hazel, you should distribute a binary. Yeah, that's, I'm planning to maybe do that. But um, you can always just support on Patreon. It's only like 10 bucks and then you can get all the source code and if you can build it yourself, um, then you can you can make this. Am I gonna switch to Visual Studio 2022? Yeah, I will eventually. There's just no real reason to do it yet. Like, why? <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the current situation. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that's kind of the state of the state of things. I wanna basically. Um, I'm glad that we added that we fixed that cube thing and we added the kind of reset transform and stuff like that. That's kind of nice. I should probably put that somewhere else because there's like create, delete. Yeah, let's maybe put them in a different place. So create, delete, and then let's do an I'm GUI separator. And I don't know about the prefab thing. We'll see. So there we go, that looks a bit a bit neater now. So if I right click on cube spawner and create an empty entity, does that make it? Yeah, it does make it a, a child, okay, good. Oh, but this is a bit. Does that not delete the, does that not update? Entity deleted callback, context destroy entity. Exclude children. What's it? Oops, what's the default? False. So it shouldn't be excluding children. Uh, yeah, but this isn't, um... This isn't removing the child from the parent. So, if I'm... If I have a parent...
That's a bit of a bug. The thing is, like, I don't know if I have that much interest releasing Hazel as, like, a standalone binary thing. Because, like, I mean, you know, Unity, Unreal, just use those engines. Like, if you want to learn more about engines and so, therefore, you want the source code and you want to tweak them and all of that stuff, then you can support Hazel on Patreon and get access to it that way. Or, if you want to just... If you're not interested in making games, you just want to play a game, then obviously Hazel will be able to distribute games. That's kind of the point. The goal is ultimately to like ship a game on Steam. So, um, yeah. So let's add that empty entity again and let's delete the entity and yeah. So we, the arrow disappears because, because it's, um, doesn't have any children anymore and it's aware of that. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, not sure, like as far as where this game goes, not sure, but again, it's, it started off as just a way for us to be able to visualize some stuff, some like performance issues, definitely hide the grid. Um, visualize like some performance issues and, well not visualize, but like showcase, we'll say some performance issues. Ooh, there's actually a way you can get up on this roof. If you um, just spam jump or hold jump or something, I think you have to spam it like, yeah, there we go. Brilliant. I kind of like that mechanic though. Again, like look at this, look at these shadows, man. That's not, I gotta change the way we deal with shadows to be a little bit nicer by default, whatever. Cube hunt, kind of like duck hunt, but cubes. So you can see, I think the performance is slightly dropping. No, actually it's still 16. Feels like it's dropping a bit. Maybe because I'm streaming or whatever. Yeah, it drops to 30. V-Sync drops to 30 every now and then, and that's just gonna get worse and worse. Because we're all rendering these kind of individually. If we take a look at the draw calls, then you can see that each of them is like an individual draw call, even though the geometry is like identical. And so we have like over a thousand draw calls now and stuff like that. So yeah, not ideal. Um, we also have a whole bunch of lights. But the lights, I think, are okay. So this is showing the light complexity. Um, and because they're pretty well spread out, I think it should be okay. I mean, if we look at the... If we look at the render statistics, then... The actual geometry part, like, even on the GPU, we're only spending 8 milliseconds, and the actual geometry part is like, is like 4. 4 to 5. So... And that's without, that's without any sorting and tons of overdraw and we don't care about that at all. So it's actually pretty decent, I think. So it's probably not worth optimizing. Um, like as in the light, the light stuff I think is pretty good. And each one of these cubes, not like, not like actually each one, not each piece, but each cube has one light on it. So that kind of glowing orange piece that you see let me just hide this. This glowing orange piece actually has a point light attached to it. So that's why it's showing up in the light complexity and stuff. I guess like my ultimate concern here is what about, so static meshes should still be fine. So we need to like, this is almost ready to be merged into master, I think, but I really have to probably uh, open like, the actual sandbox project, which is in hazelnut sandbox project sandbox. So we'll open the sandbox project and we have to make sure that that stuff still works because I don't think it will. Like this actually seems to be here, surprisingly, but oh, it does work. What? Why does this work? I didn't know this worked. What? So how, how? So these are all meshes with sub, sub, sub mesh index zero. I guess they could be static meshes, but they're just not. And that seems to be acceptable. Well, yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't it be, right? Oh, but what about something like Sponsor? I don't think that will work. So let's try Sponsor, man. I haven't opened Sponsor in so long. Kind of scared. Okay, so it doesn't work. Uh, that's okay. 
Let's go to debug. That's actually probably just a bug. <laughs> Why does this work, lol? Well, yeah, I just wasn't expecting it to work. So, you know, it's it's a real fear. You know, so, sometimes when something works, even though you think it shouldn't, it's scary because it might be more broken than you think. <laughs> so I'm always kind of just wary of that. 